Welcome to another episode of Cutting Edge Health. Today, we're doing a second part of a series that focuses on ligamentum blavum hypertrophy. For those of you who haven't heard this term, we're going to explain it. We're going to explain why it's important for back pain, particularly as we age. If we haven't met, I'm Dr. William Landrum. I'm a physician that helps patients understand their options for how to be able to heal both brain and body, punch pain in the face, whether it's physical or mental, and get back to leading the life they deserve. Today, we're talking about ligament and flavum hypertrophy, and specifically why age plus the size of that ligament can be equivalent to an increase in pain. So as you guys know, really what we want to focus on is what's the science behind it not just what i feel or how i think about something but can we give you documentation that really shows you that this is the truth and so that's one of the things that we want to make sure that you have the ability to be able to be excited because you can go reference the actual studies that we talk about so you can see it for yourself talk about it with families and friends and be able to say i get it i understand it and there's proof for why this is so let's get you excited and let's talk about this. So in our previous video, we talked about something that's called shopping cart sign, which is basically as someone gets more mature, they can easily start developing something that's called spinal stenosis, which is a narrowing in the spinal canal. So what does that look like? If we were to take a look at a spine and we were to say, okay, can we turn this so we can see the area where the spinal cord exists? And the spinal cord exists in an area like this, and we can see that there's an opening that's present here, that canal. In this canal exists a number of different things, including the spinal cord, the CSF fluid, and other structures that are present there. But one of the structures that's most prominent is something that's called the ligamentum flavum. That ligament increases in size, but it does so slowly over decades. And what ends up resulting is pressure that's applied to the cord. And one of the ways to be able to relieve that pressure is to have a bent posture, which is this evidence of being likely one would lean on a shopping cart so that it makes pain feel better. Many people, as they get more mature, they feel awkward and upset about leaning and being bent over because it makes them feel less than youthful. And so they want to be able to stand erect, but it hurts. And so then comes this discussion about how do we make this better? Many times that results in someone being referred for a traditional surgery and they're having spine surgery in order to try to feel better. And we're going to talk about that in this talk. But prior to all that comes the conversation of what is the ligamentum flavum? How does it increase in size and what matters? So when we take a look at the literature, we can see a couple different papers, a paper like the role of ligamentum flavum area as a parameter of central stenosis, a second which looks at ligamentum flavum hypertrophy and how it contributes to that sensation that goes down the leg that's burning or tingling, which is neurogenic intermittent claudication. And finally, a comparison of ligamentum flavum thickness between central and lateral lesions in a patient with canal stenosis. So as we talk about ligamentum flavum hypertrophy, it was originally reported in 1913. So greater than 100 years or so ago as a um, potential cause of spinal stenosis that, as I described before, has a number of different factors. But one of the things that potentially impacts it is that of stress from the intervertebral disc being degenerative. And so what does that mean and what does that look like? So what that means is if we were to take a look at a spine model and we're able to see this in depth and detail, one of the things that we can be able to see is the areas of these discs that exist right here. And as we get more mature, we can see those discs start to decrease in potential disc height. And so when we take a look at that disc height, does it affect the ligament of flavum? And we believe that it is because that change in that disc height can potentially cause mechanical stressors, which might imp impact the, the degree of the ligament of flavum. Hypertrophy stands for an increase in size. And so that increase in size in that small area that doesn't change can result in pressure. So what does this look like in a radiograph? What it looks like radiographically is the following. So it looks like this. And that doesn't really look that clear. I'm almost positive that it doesn't. So what we're gonna do is to give you a representation in kind of this uh, model that shows it like this. So if we were to take a look at this model, we can see that same type of orientation where this would be the person's back, up here would be the person's stomach. Here is their spinal cord and canal, okay? It sits within that area where you're gonna see this area of a triangle that exists into this area like this, where this out marker of the pin uh, sits, and that's the flavum. That's the ligament itself. And so you can see that triangle, we take a look at this picture, which is demarcated by B and E. 
the cord is actually C. And so what we can see is that can be compressed in and around that region and be squeezed. And that causes problems and issues. We take a look at this across multiple different pictures. We can see that that areas that uh, these different slides, A, B, C, and D, we can see different types of compression changes within the areas of the facets, which are the areas of the joints that allow for us to be able to bend and twist. We can see disc bulges that come in and push against the area of the cord. And all of this is accentuated and made worse by a ligament that's increased in size because it makes all these other changes so much more worse. So how do radiologists traditionally measure the ligament? What they do is they look at this. So if we were to take a look and we see that triangle, that bright white triangle that's present there, that's the area of the cord. And then the area that outlines it in kind of gray is this area of the ligamentum flavum. And so a picture off to the right hand side shows a blown up area of this where you can see this flavum that's increased in size. Those that are you, those of you that are joining us live and a little bit late, we're talking about spinal stenosis, specifically this ligament that can make things work. If you have questions, by the way, pop them up if you're here and you're joining live. And so one of the things that we've been curious about is this stressor that takes place that causes this squeeze that's present there. So is it present like that at every level of the spine? So for instance, let's say you looked at the lumbar region or the low back higher up is the same as the low back region lower down. And as you probably guess, it's not. So what we can see is that there is traditionally five levels that are present in the low back, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. And what they've been able to see is that there's a thickness that's associated with the area that's kind of near the middle. And there's an area of thickness that's been associated to the outside. And what you can see is that we kind of go from L1 all the way up to L4. You can see that the thickness seems to be worse, with particularly at the L4 region, which is not unusual because we see a lot of patients that have that, particularly in the medial component. And L1 through 5 on the lateral aspect doesn't seem to be as differential, though. You can see that there's differences at L1 and L3, right? And so these things kind of matter because this is what frequently results in us potentially talking about surgery. So that paper that reviewed that looked and saw that there were changes at the 4-5 level, there were changes that are present at 5-S1, and that age seemed to make that worse, particularly when you have degenerative changes of the disc, as we kind of alluded to earlier, right? So let's talk a little bit about how this has affected people in general. More than 200,000 individuals have spinal stenosis, and it typically affects patients over the age of 65, though I've seen it in my own practice much younger than that. And so it's not always 65. Sometimes it can be as early as in the 40s where people can be able to see this compression, that numbness that goes down the leg, that problem that gets better when you sit, but it's worse when you stand and when you walk. And what they have seen is that surgery, particularly from 1979 to 1992, increased by eightfold. So eight times as many surgeries took place during that time, and then it started to level off. And what they've been able to see is that lumbar fusions, although still fairly prevalent, are not going up astronomically, but they're still pretty broad in terms of rates. And so what this one study looked at was like, okay, so we know that when we take a look at the surgery, we can see on the left-hand side, that little small bright white triangle at the top left, we look over on the right-hand side, it's way, bigger, it's much open. You can see a lot of white and present there because the surgery has opened that area up. Does it make things better? Is it better than not doing anything? And there've been a number of studies that have looked at this. And in many cases, there's not much difference. So what we can see is this curve that looks at surgery, which is a solid black line, and we can see this dotted, which is physical therapy. And what we're able to kind of make out on that context uh, the left-hand scale is what's the level of that person's ability to be able to be functional. And what we can be able to denote and figure out is that there's improvement, but there's not a lot of improvement between the two. So is surgery always necessary? No, we talk about in another video, when is surgery necessary? But in this context, we can see that there's not a lot of differentiation or difference between the two. So what happens when we take a look at the areas of that 
component of ligamentum flavum and we look at that thickness and then we try to compare it to the area. And that's a completely different study because we look at the thickness of how it can be across the section versus how big it may happen to be as a whole. What we've been able to figure out is historically radiologists, doctors, we've looked at, oh, it's this size. And so then it must be a problem. But what we're starting to come to conclusion is that the area makes more difference. And so as we take a look at this, we traditionally have looked at cross-sectional area of the canal. We've looked at thickness. We've seen different components of disc herniation. But now as we look at the ligament and flavum area and what claudication is, again, is that area where you have numbness, tingling down the leg, is that you can start to see that as the ligament and flavum area increases, that you can see a fairly significant amount, as you can see these asterisks that are present over here, of an increase in claudication that's present. So those papers have been summarized with the following, is that when we take a look at thickness and age in conjunction, they're probably two of the most important factors of how impactful it is for stenosis. And those areas can typically be worse in males from L2-3 to L5-S1, and the lower level is typically worse in females at L5-S1. So for those people who have had MRIs and they're trying to put this together, depending on your gender, you can really be able to assess how this may be impactful to you. Additionally, when we take a look, this picture here on the left shows a measure of the area, right? Which only looks like 3.95 millimeters. But when we take a look at, uh, pardon me, on the left is a picture of thickness. When we take a look over here, this area is what is important because it shows the overall reduction of the spinal canal as a whole, as opposed to just one specific component. So we look at this highlighted summary. What we see is that thickness, while it's important, and it's connected to aging and disc degeneration and stenosis. The main area that, again, to kind of hammer this home is the component of ligamentum flavum area that makes the most difference because it takes up the canal and there's been percentages and statistical analyses that have been able to show this. So although, as stated here, both are associated with spinal stenosis, probably the more sensitive measurement is ligamentum flavum area. So if you're watching this and you have a doc who's taking a look and trying to be able to clarify what stenosis is worse for you and why it might be um, potentially a problem and you may need to intervene upon it, what you really want to be able to ask is not just the thickness, but the area and how that can be able to impact your pain. Because if you can address that, you may be able to get back to leading the life that you deserve and do the things that you want to do. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you so much for your time and attention and have a great day.